Hello from London. The four weeks of my summer language sprint are over and it's time to look back at how it's been going. I've been working hard on my basic Japanese and my intermediate Basque. Before I tell you what's what, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Gareth Popkins. Here we talk about language learning from many angles. It's not only my own language learning projects, but I've got interviews with inspiring language learners and movers and shakers, vlogging from language learner events and a bit of my own travel, and we look at methods too. So if you haven't yet subscribed for the vibe, please do. Well, in the fourth week of this sprint, I managed to do five hours of Japanese. So all five days, Monday to Friday, I hit the target. Unfortunately, with Basque, on Wednesday, I fell short and I only managed to do half an hour's Basque. <coughs> so uh, that was the second week, actually, when I haven't managed to uh, get the target done in Basque. Because back in week two, I only managed to do on one day 10 minutes Basque. But looking back over the whole project, I got in the full 20 hours of Japanese plus 55 minutes and actually on Basque already uh, as well. I, always, I also managed to do uh, 20 hours plus 5 minutes because I really overshot on week one. So I had a bit of money in the bank as it were with Basque. Now, as a result of doing this project, I've certainly increased the amount of time I have spent on both languages. My general plan with Japanese during this year, I started Japanese back in January, was to do half an hour a day, seven rather than five days a week, up to my first visit to Japan in October. And if I'd kept going like that for the last four weeks, obviously I'd have clocked up 14 hours. Instead then, 20 hours, 55 minutes. So that in terms of time put in is certainly a result. And generally with the Basque, which I've been learning for several years, I've been down to occasional study each week uh, in previous months, and maybe on average a couple of 30-minute Italki lessons, that's Skype lessons one-to-one -one with a teacher. Well, during this month, I did 11 Basque lessons, so that's certainly more conversational practice than I would otherwise have done, and a lot, lot more study, including preparation for the lessons. So altogether, I think it was well worth it to do this focus language sprint during these four weeks. By the way, the reason I did it now was because I have a sabbatical from work, which has now come to an end, and so I had extra time in general to devote to language learning and to other things. What about the highlights of the final week then? One of them was actually uh, a reading piece from uh, Japanese from Zero Book 3, the main textbook that I'm using, which was in the traditional Japanese text. I'll show it to you now. Um, and this is going up and down, you can see here. So the traditional way of reading from right to left down the lines and moving across. That was quite exciting to try. Uh, the main difficulty with it was some of the vocab, I think, and as I mentioned in a previous catch-up video, I'm not doing enough review and different vocabulary items are not coming up enough in the course without that sort of review to really optimise my remembering of the vocabulary. Other highlights in Japanese were the te verb forms, which is a sort of imperative, you put it on the end of a verb and it means do it. Uh, so that was interesting, another verb form to learn. Again, very, very regular really, it seems, in Japanese so far. There are a few irregular verbs, but really only a handful, at least those that I've come across so far. As for Basque, I uh, got stuck into the Lan Quadrenoa, the workbook for Ariane B2.1, which is the main textbook, well, not the main, but one of the textbooks I'm using, because I'm, I'm running several in parallel for Basque. So there was a new reading passage, which I got stuck into, which was talking about uh, an, somebody having an accident when they were going climbing with a friend. And then there was focus on different ways of explaining what's about to happen, what's just happened, uh, different adverbs really uh, in there. So that was something new and something useful to start the workbook. And another highlight for Japanese was I woke up one morning with kanji, the Chinese characters used in Japanese, uh, coming through my head. And although we've only done 21 of them so far in the Japanese from Zero book three, I was able to remember them and to imagine them. So a lot more of this is going to happen, I think, next year when I start to focus on learning a lot more Japanese characters. What hasn't gone so well 
over the whole four week period, I would say would be that I haven't done as much flashcarding or vocabulary review for Basque through the goal list method as I would have liked. My plan was really to do much more flashcarding of the material from Japanese from zero books one and two as I moved into book three and to get the same effect really with the goal list method for Basque. And I've done less of that with both of them than I would have liked. There's a tension really, I think, between breaking new ground and reviewing what you've already covered. And I suppose the lesson there is, because I have been working hard and I think doing effective stuff, that even one hour a day is not optimal if you want to learn really fast and really rapidly. I sort of am telling myself if I'd spent two hours a day on the language, then I'd have had a lot more time for that sort of review. So there is a bit of a tension there. But I have been doing some flashcarding and keeping going to an extent. I've also done less video than I would have liked. Video listening and audio listening in Japanese during this month. Hardly got stuck into YouTube, although I've got had some suggestions of good channels to watch. And I've done less of the Pimsleur audio course than I would have liked because I haven't been commuting. I haven't been walking down to the tube each morning as I do when I go to the office with the headphones on. And I haven't been running as much with the headphones on because I've been unwell for several shorter periods during the month. Nevertheless, as I say, I think thanks to this project, I've put in much more work than I would have done on both languages. And the accountability dimension, the fact that I'm reporting back to you guys and keeping a diary on the website, has certainly uh, got me doing a bit of extra time several days when I really uh, wouldn't otherwise, I'm sure, have done it. Are you the sort of person who responds to that sort of accountability? It does depend on your personality. I think it doesn't work for everybody. But logging and some sort of public or semi-public accountability is always, for me, a good idea, I have to say. And I certainly feel with the Basque, with all the extra conversational practice I've been having with the 11 lessons, I wouldn't have had more than six otherwise because I was doing, you know, I was doing maybe two a week. I'd have had maybe six to eight lessons. My conversational abilities are feeling more fluent in many ways with Basque, but I'm still coming up across a grammatical uh, stumbling box, particularly with conditional and subjunctive forms that I've seen passively but not properly fully studied yet. As for Japanese, I feel I've got much more of a base. It's getting easier to see patterns, I think, and actually to remember words, but I still haven't made the jump to speaking. And that's going to be one of the things for the next period, I think. Other highlights this week, I've been extremely busy creating and working on content for the channel and for the site. So one day I had a great uh, interview with Stefano Suigo from Lingue Passioni, uh, a YouTube channel. He's a great language teacher, translator, a guy I know from the Polyglot Gathering. And we were recording a couple of things which will be coming out on the channel in the next weeks or months. So look out for those. I also had a good session on Wednesday teaching Russian time and date expressions in my Russian A2 revision webinar series and it was a lot of work to prepare and that was the reason on Wednesday why I didn't manage to get the full one hour's basking but really having to teach the Russian date and time expressions helped me get clear and focus up to some maybe fossilized errors that I was making myself in the language. There's nothing like teaching something, you know, I think, to help you really make sure that you're on top of it yourself. And I'm an advanced Russian learner, but taking my game apart with some pretty basic stuff was actually for me, let alone for the participants, really useful. Another th fun thing I did on YouTube uh, in the last week was to edit the bookshop safari from Vienna. This is something which I've had the footage for for ages and I wasn't sure how it was going to work out. You know, you shoot these things, you have an idea in your head. But it's great fun putting them together and certainly I enjoyed it. And if you haven't seen the video that went out last Thursday, then do. If you're into that sort of thing, do check it out. So that's it then, that's the end of the month's two language tango. And now I move to sort of looking ahead to how things are gonna develop in the coming 
uh, months, and the cat has just jumped up onto the chair where my books were. Kitty, hey, hey, it's not our cat actually, it's a neighbour's cat, which is very, very friendly and uh, likes, uh, likes a stroke, but I'm allergic to cats. Uh, the other day I'd left the garden door open and I came in, went up to my study, which is on the first floor, that's to say upstairs, and the cat was on my desk looking at the Basque books. So, you know, maybe it's a bit of a linguist, this cat. Looking ahead then, I've now got eight weeks to when I arrive in Japan on the 12th of October. I'm supposed to be flying into Fukuoka, where the Polyglot Conference will be at the end of the, that week, so a week later, so almost a week later, from Hong Kong. Now, given events in Hong Kong, goodness knows whether that will actually happen, but that currently is the plan. So I've got eight weeks, in effect only six weeks, because the final two weeks I'll be travelling with work and working in Singapore and then in Hong Kong, and I'll have very little time, if any, to do any focused study at least. So what I'm going to be doing with Japanese and what I'm doing this week now as I'm back at work, because I'm recording this of course at the end of week four, is getting back to my old plan of half an hour a day, seven days a week with Japanese and I shall be keeping going with Japanese from zero. But also now I've got the commute back, one good good side to that is there'll be more time for reviewing flashcards, making more flashcards and listening a lot more to the Pimsleur audio course as I walk to and from the tube station, from home and from the office. With a basket, we'll be back to maybe a couple of lessons a week at most and a bit of occasional study in between. That then is the plan. And of course, the other big step for the final six weeks with Japanese is to actually start trying to speak and getting some lessons booked on italkai.com with teachers for at least 30 minute sessions. So that is what I plan to do and I will keep you up to date back to the old routine of a monthly update. The first one for the Japanese then will be at the end of August in a couple of weeks time. Then I'll probably fit in another one in September before I'm letting you know actually from Japan how everything is going, moving into the Polyglot Conference at the same time too. I'm still busy booking my accommodation for Japan, left all that a bit late. Uh, with the Rugby World Cup on, I think there's less accommodation than you, than you might wish for. And the fact that the pound keeps falling, thanks to uh, matters which will remain unspoken, is a, a bit of a source of frustration as well. That one, though, out of my control. So there we are. That's been the summer language sprint, the two language tango. We're in the middle of August. How's your summer going from a language learning perspective? Is it a time when you really have more desire to get stuck in or it's actually less possible for you to do so? Let me know how it's going for you in the comments below. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for the vibe, throw me a thumbs up, tickle that bell and share the affair. See you next time. Look who was in the kitchen.